Good afternoon. So what we're going to do today is we're going to have a look at abstracting out the uh, underlying storage mechanism so we can plug in different ones and test the performance of each. So we're going to like take what we've done before and pull it apart. We're going to have an in-memory store and a file store. And if we get time, we might do a file-backed memory store, which would be pretty cool. So uh, what we've currently got is we've currently got this type of setup here. We've got the client application, we've got the database class, um, and then within that, it manages a, a set of records, which are kind of a virtual thing right now. But what we want to do here is really, we could have multiple types of storage for the database. It can support multiple access mechanisms, and each one of those might have its own kind of unique, different implementations. We want to kind of break that apart a bit. And we also want, uh, and so those implementations might be key value store, columnar database, document database, you name it. Um, and as well as those kind of user constructs of how they want to react act with data and what data they've got to store. Underneath that, there might be different mechanisms of how they're stored. So in memory, on disk, a whole variety of things. So I'm gonna make this a bit pluggable. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna pull this apart a bit and I'm gonna have in here the concept of a key value store. And make that a bit bigger. Boom. And uh, I'm gonna attach that to that. Um, but it's gonna be a one-to-one -one relationship there. So a particular uh, database will only have one key value store implementation. Um, and it might have other implementations as well. So for example, I'll just put an example in here. It might be a document store as well, for example. Okay, so that's just uh, just provide a bit of context there. So when you construct your database, instantiate it, you'll say, here's the key value store implementation I want to use. Here's the document store implementation I want to use. That's right for my application needs. Now go and do your stuff. Okay, so that's their kind of interfaces, if you like. So underneath that uh, high-level interface, um, what we're going to do is provide a couple of implementations. So today we're going to do a, a in-memory KV store. We're going to do a file KV store. That's what we're going to do. And then there, what's going to hold our records, basically. Okay. Um, what we might also do is say, well, actually, you know, as well as having um, you know, a key value store to store records in memory, we might also link this to this. We might link these together as well. Now, optionally, this could be effectively a, a right. Test that out and see how we can do it. Well, I'm going to keep this up on the right-hand side whilst we code. Uh... Hi, I'm Adam from the future, and I'm interjecting now because there was an awful lot of coding in today's video, so we're going to skip ahead to the cool performance bits. If you want to see how the sausage was made, watch the other videos. Thanks. Right, that has allegedly built. So, run the test again. This will run uh, performance tests against the memory wrapping the file store first i think and then secondly it will run it just against the in-memory version and we should see much faster sets on the in-memory version but probably the same gets you generating keys i'd imagine wowzers yeah so yeah that works <laughs> so this is our set and get for our um, memory store that's wrapping the file store. As you can see, same performance that we had the last time when before we refactored, which is good because it confirms that we've not made the performance worse, or significantly worse. Um, and here we see the performance of just using the in-memory store. And as you can see, um, you know, it says gets are a little bit slower, but um that's probably just a randomness in how we're running it and then this request per second writes is just like insane um so it's like you know a million writes a second so you can see that in memory stores are insanely quick so now we compare this against redis we win <laughs> so uh, that's a bonus um but yeah let me just uh neaten this up a bit because it's not really printing out what it's doing um
because we might change the default in future. I don't want the log message to be misleading. It's deliberately generic. So here we see default key value store performance test. It goes through. Again, this will take about 16 seconds. Need to run this against an external hard drive that's not encrypted up the wazoo, incidentally, which my default one is on this laptop. Boom, boom and boom yeah there we go so yeah here we go so we do see that the get performance is basically the same um for both because the get was in memory anyway uh, the sets though for in memory store are infinitely quicker so that is a really good test it is consistent as well so that's great so i'm happy with that um i think that's all i wanted to cover today really i mean we've got um the memory test and the file test. Uh, oh, actually, we can use just let's, yeah. Let's add a performance test in for just. Um, well, that's not the in memory one, is it? It's the uh, memory. Oh yeah, is that's correct. The in memory one. This one though is memory cached. Yeah. Okay. So let's do this again for for file only store. Okay. Uh, okay, so we've got that. So here we want to do uh, we call it file key value store, but we need to provide it with the full path to the database. And this is where the model um, uh, uh, where the model breaks down because we need to pass in um the folder in here now i need to remember how that's created i think it was literally the name <coughs> um <clears throat> we've got a bit of a catch 22 here because we don't know the full folder we, we, we're gonna have to assume something about the implementation so this is nasty so uh, So it calls a uh, dot ground up db slash nasty plus db name plus uh, yeah, I think that's it basically, isn't it? Let's just double check that that's correct. Basically, what we're doing um, in database when we're creating an instance. Very naughty. So yeah. Based, uh, which is dot ground up db slash db name. And we're passing that in. So, don't want that trailing slash. Ground up db, is that right? Dot ground up db slash db name. Dot ground up db slash db name. Wants to be full path. Passing that in. So, compile. Yeah, there we go. So I want to change this mech, this thing here. So this is uh oh, let's keep value still performance. Make sure the log files right. So let's run that. So we'll see all three in a row. So we'll see the uh here we go, default key value store, which is the memory cached file store. So we should see here slow sets fast gets and then for the in memory store fast sets fast gets and then for file store slow gets slow sets or slow sets slow gets so far so good that's the first one done it's just destroying all that memory it's used no memory leaks because we're using you know, smart pointing okay so here we go so as you can see it's taking its sweet sweet time in memory key value store performance test I uh, don't think you are dude I think that's uh, incorrect Log message there. Yeah, I think uh, did I? I edited. I've edited the wrong one. Go. Oh. So don't be thrown by the uh, log messages. Just absolutely named the wrong one in there. Okay, so yeah, as we can see here, it's actually not too bad on the gets. Um. So the sets which is doing that sync is uh, expected performance, which is the same as a setup here. 
and then the gets instead of being like one and a half million <laughs> requests per second it's twenty two thousand. but that's to be expected right i mean this is the whole point you don't get something for nothing in database design so we've now got effective tests for all of our <coughs> excuse me all of our um storage types underneath we should really go back and change the key value tests so that they're testing each individual implementation as well but i'll do that offline um no value making you forcing you to watch that um but yeah so we've now implemented three different storage mechanisms for the same um database access paradigm which is key value store uh, the reason i want to do this is because we're going to tune this to within an inch of its life in future and we're going to layer over on top of key value store document stores and other types of databases and use the key value store really as a lower level mechanism um which we can then tune so any performance gains on the key value store will be performance gains across every type of database and we don't have to implement the same mechanism over and over again um but that's the end of today's i hope you uh, found that interesting so we've implemented now the different storage layers what we're going to do next is we're going to look at um uh buckets of keys at the moment we've been talking about there's a database and then there's keys right so uh, again back to here we've got uh yeah in memory store and then we've got our records okay but we've not got any grouping of records now in a database what's quite normal to do is you'll say well actually i don't want to you know store everything in kind of a default namespace you want to say okay this is my database that i've got a connection to but I've got a bucket of information over here I'm storing and a bucket of information over here. So same connection, multiple buckets to store stuff in. And you can either query a single bucket or query across buckets. So depending on the database, they're called buckets, they're called table spaces, the you know, they're called collections, whatever the paradigm is, we're going to implement that next. And we're going to show how we're going to store multiple buckets, the multiple different files of records. So we're going to change how the key value store works instead of one key per file, which is very wasteful. Uh, also eats space on your machine and inodes and all sorts we're going to implement um, an append only file model so every key in a bucket goes inside the same file so we're going to have a bucket file effectively and this is where we start to merge in our storage uh, lessons learned and our hashing algorithm le lessons learned because we're going to implement a very um, performant mechanism for append only file storage and the reason we're doing append only is for uh, later on where we start to add transactionality durability and consistency of an append only file as a base format is going to be very very useful for that um but i hope you enjoyed the video please please do subscribe watch my other videos um and please do you know tweet out and let other people know that this is available and can be watched hope you've enjoyed it have a great day thank you